right, guys, welcome back. I wanted to share a little bit more about Desmo. So this is the third video, and I'm more than happy to make more videos uh, based on the questions I get from you all. So in the first video, we didn't use Desmos at all. We just kind of uh, laid out the letters using graph paper, thought about our knowledge of horizontal and vertical lines, and were careful with um, restricting domains and ranges as appropriate. Then in the last video, we built this letter H. Uh, we used a nice folder, stuck the equations in there, it took us 10 equations, and then we can just close that folder up and we don't have to worry about those equations, move on to the next letter. So the reason I wanted to do another video is what about more round letters, right? Um, as we think about block letters, a good number of the letters in the alphabet you can make without kind of the, the more curved shapes. But let's talk about a letter like O or C or S or some of those, right? So those of us um, like myself who have names that involve more of the curved letters have a little a little bit more of a challenge. So I have an S and an O. Um, S is gonna be a little harder than an O, but um, let's talk about O for starters. So I wanted to share with you guys how to build the equation of a circle. Um, this is a, a great class to start learning about circles if we haven't already. So I'm just gonna add a note that says the general form for the equation of a circle, I can type here, is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the radius. So let's just try this together. I'm going to enter my function, actually a relation here. Technically, a circle doesn't pass the vertical line test. That's not a function. Um, but if I just type x squared plus y squared equals r squared, my ultimate goal here with you all is to build an O. So I get this nice, very circular O. Some of you are going to like it. Some of you are going to want it to be more oblong. So I'll talk about that in a little while. But the nice thing about this is, of course, I can increase the radius. So I can make my O big or small. But an immediate concern I'm hoping from you all is, what if the O comes after the H, right? What if I'm trying to get it further on, uh, further down the line. And that's where our knowledge of transformation comes in. So I love this as a final project for you all because it allows you to think critically with the knowledge that I know you have. So remember how we could get graphs to shift left and right, and we could get graphs to shift up and down? Let's just apply that same knowledge here. So when we first learned about transformations, we used the letter H, right? Uh, and we incorporated that into kind of this left-right shifting. So I'm going to use H as a left-right shift, which we'll talk through. And then we first used the letter K when we were studying transformations in Unit 1. So I'm going to do the same thing with the Y coordinate. I'm going to tag on K. And as you guys are probably familiar with in Desmos, we can build these sliders. Um, so again, kind of what I'm doing here is I'm going to then play the k value and just let you observe that just like we thought it's going to move the circle up and down uh, and then once it gets back into view here I'll switch and play h for you and just like we think it should move it left and right. So this is where you can just play around with your sliders until you get that o to a place that you like, make it have a radius that you like. So I'm kind of getting in the ballpark of where I want to be with my o, thinking that I want it after my h. Uh, I want it to be about the same size as my h. So actually my h I can tell is from 2 to 9, so it's 7 units tall. So I'm going to just plug in my radius as half of 7. So 3.5 should be um, good to give me the same height on my o as my h has. And let's see, what else should I do? I want to move it a little bit more to the right. You could choose to have your letters overlap. I'm going to kind of give mine a bit of space. And then I can tell I got to drop it down just a hair to make it more in line with my H. Of course, yours, maybe you, that's part of the character, right, is having the letters off sync. So just be creative and, and do your thing. Um, but that looks a little bit better to me if I'm going to kind of make mine in a straight line across the top. So anyways, that's the outside of the O. So if I'm happy with that as the outside of my O, then I've got to work on the inside. So I need another circle. Um, so I, again, I'm, I've already shared, I'm a fan of copy paste. So let's just copy this equation down here. And now the only problem is I can't use the same H and K because I've already chosen H and K. So I could, I could actually do a couple different things. Back in this first circles equation, I could replace H with 5.5 because that was the value I liked. 
oops, sorry, my H and K are flip-flopped. I could replace H with 9.2, and I could replace K with 5.5, .5. and then that way the H and the K sliders can be used to figure out how to get my new circle to be the proper size and all that. That's probably a good thing. Lock in your H and K once they're values that you're happy with. Now these H and K sliders are going to apply to the new circle, which for me currently means I want to get the inside of my O. So right off the bat, I can tell my radius, oops, needs to shrink. Let me fix the radius on my first circle. This is what I love about Desmos. There's a lot of trial and error. So I'm doing this unplanned on purpose so you guys can kind of see, you know, if you mess something up, just fix it. It's not really a big deal. Um, so what I had just done, I accidentally was changing the radius on both of my circles, but I actually just want to change it on this new one. So I locked in the radius on my first circle. Now this R is for the inside O, which I know needs to be smaller than my current O. So again, that's kind of a funny looking O next to that H, I think, but hey, it works, right? Um, we're just talking about the bare bone basics here, and then if you want to get a little bit more fancy, you can. So, you know, deciding how big you want your O to be until you feel you're happy. This is where the creativity and um, create uh, the creative side for all of you will come out, which I'm so excited to see. Everybody has creative bones. Um, so that's one way to make an, an O. Again, it may not look like the greatest O to you. So some people think about O's more as like an oval than a circle. So the last thing I'll share is if you want, you can make it a bit more oblong um, by dividing the y term by a number. So maybe I'll just choose three for starters. Um, that's definitely making it more of an oblong shape. Um, you can try other numbers. That's still, you know, more oblong. Doesn't have to be anything too dramatic, but just play around. I mean, that's half of the fun. So to make an oval, you just divide either x or y by a number, and then it's going to make it stretch more in that direction. So I hope that gives a few more ideas. Um, let's see, are there any other letters I should talk about? Let's just talk about half circles real quick and then I'll call it quits here and wait for further questions from you all. The other thing that you might wanna be building like for a, a C or, or an S or something like that is maybe a half circle. So let's just talk about that. Um, so I'm gonna enter another circle. Let me lock in my inner circle with the values that we ended up using, which were 9.2, 5, 0.5, and 2.6. All right, so I just stuck those values in. So now my H and K sliders are gonna be for this new circle that I'm typing. I'm typing in a new circle. And I'm going to just share real quick how to make it a half circle. And then I think you all will be pretty, pretty much squared away and ready to embark on this creative process for yourselves. So let's go ahead and start by pushing it further away. So I'm going to assume that this next letter I'm building is going to um, be to the right of the O. So let's go ahead and bump our H out even further. All right. And I'll go ahead and just bump the radius back to 3.5 so it gets more the size of, of the letters. A little further bump, how about in the right direction? And then I only want to show half of it. Let's say I'm going to try to make a C or something like that. An easy way to show just half of the circle is to go to the equation of the circle and then figure out... Um, which part of it you want to show. So in my case, I want to show the left half of the circle to get a letter C. So I want to make sure that my X's are all, looks like less than around 17. So let's try letting X be less than or equal to 17. So that just gets the half of the circle that I wanted to show. And then if I were making a C, what I would do now is copy paste that same circle equation shrink the radius to get this nice little piece right in here and then build the vertical bars. So again, I'm going to stop now because I don't want to steal any of your guys's joy. I'm really excited to see what y'all come up with. So 
uh, share with me uh, as you're working through it. If you have questions, comments, concerns, frustrations, just reach out. But once you're satisfied with your name in Desmos, um, of course, throughout the process, you're, you're saving it, right? Then right up here in the upper corner, there's an option to share your graph. You guys are just gonna be able to click on that. And then you'll copy this link and include it in the assignment submission so that I can click on your graph and look at all your work. So make sure you do that rather than just, rather than just screenshot because I will need to be looking at your equations to award you full credit. All right, have fun.